Let's dive deeper into the action with the market's reporters. Taylor, what are you watching? I'm taking a look at shares of HP. As you can see, they're off now about nine, nine and a half percent. This is as, of course, they talked about um, cutting back their workforce of about 16,000 employees and doing a $1 billion restructure. And they're trying to cut their way to top line growth. Top line growth has been interesting. It's been ranging from negative 10 percent to positive 10 percent in the last four fiscal years. For this fiscal year, they're looking at zero percent top line growth. Next year looks like it could be negative one. So they're trying to cut their way into boosting that around. If we take a look at a long term chart, the chart now really does not look good because you have shares today wiping out all the gains that you've made in the last three years. So you're back now down to the lowest since July of 2017. They're hoping, of course, to turn around the bottom line, boosting earnings per share from 224 to 232, which was the higher end of where analysts wanted it. So at least in the interim, that should help the bottom line. But as we know, you have to do more to drive that top line growth. You eventually can't cut your way into growth. Mike? Well, Taylor, it was a pretty notable turnaround in the bond market today, uh, especially wanted to look at the two-year yield. Now, it shot up about four basis points after the jobs report. Presumably, investors were deciding it wasn't a disaster, uh, as bad of a disaster as some had worried. But then, as you can see in this chart, it faded back down by the end of the day, trading below 1.4%. Uh, that's near the lowest since 2017. The 10-year yield even lower, so that curve is flattening. Uh, interestingly, to see this happen, this turnaround, especially with this very robust risk on feeling in the stock market, perhaps it all goes to that Goldilocks feeling that the jobs report created. I note that the Fed funds futures pricing are still pricing in about a 70 some percent chance of a cut in the October meeting. Sarah, however, the chance of a cut in December is now back to about 50 percent. So it looks like a coin flip for the December meeting. Thanks, Mike. Well, it sure has been quite the week, so I want to take a short trip down memory lane just to show really how far we have come, because in the beginning of the week, it seemed as though bad news was bad news. Remember on Tuesday, that was when we got that ISM manufacturing number, the worst in 10 years. That sparked the first back-to-back 1% -back decline in the S&P 500 of the entire year. Well, since then, since after Wednesday, we've now seen a rally of more than 3%. And over the past four days, we're not even down 1%. So as Mike just alluded to, it seems that bad news has now reverted back to bad news being good news because people are now talking about how much the Fed will be pushed to cut the rest of the year. And this will show you the start of the, four, the fourth quarter, even though we are only four days in, how it compares to history. At one point on Wednesday, we were having the worst start since 2009, but after that extremely strong rally that we have seen both today and yesterday, it's now only the worst start to the fourth quarter since 2016, or not even just the fourth quarter, but any quarter. So that just shows you really how far we've come.